second video game crash isn't inevitable, because in my estimation, the video game crash has already begun. I'm neither doomsaying nor sensationalizing. It brings me no modicum of pleasure to divulge this fact, but it is irrefutable fact. Don't write me off as one of the many fear mongers of the fourth estate just yet, though. At least not until you've heard the reasons why. We've seen it time and again in the industry. For every boom arises an inevitable glut of product, at which point the market goes slack, demand is incapable of compensating for a surplus of cookie cutter products, and the entire house of cards heads floorward. It's been acted out in microcosmic scale with many trends in gaming, such as the late 90s RTS boom, the mid 90s JRPG boom, and the late 90s, or the late 2000s rather, music gaming boom, and at least a dozen more mini bubbles that have swollen only to explode, leaving only studio closures, unemployed programmers, and consolidations in their wake as a result. The difference is, at those times, most of the industry wasn't trying to emulate RTS games back when that bull market took a matador saber to the ass. Right now, if you aren't targeting the pop-collared, Heineken-swilling, dubstep-blaring, Call of Duty cuntbag conglomerate, you are not making money because Call of Duty and Halo are virtually the only massive successes during this industry-wide economic downturn, which means when the multiplayer FPS bubble bursts, it takes the entire industry along with it. That is bad. Yes, there's the odd Minecraft or Portal, but for every rule, there's an exception that proves it. The first video game crash had its exceptions. In Europe, the 1983 video game crash led to a boom period for home computers like the Commodore 64 and the BBC Micro. In short, the presence of a crash does not guarantee an absence of product or even an absence of profitable products. So consider that a preemptive shut the fuck up. Independent middle market studios, see Bioware, Naughty Dog, or Insomniac back in the day, Facing the realities of diminishing returns, it found themselves either consolidated into one of the big five publishers, or they just flat out failed to pay the light bill and found themselves walking the fiduciary plank. See also Pandemic, Looking Glass, Black Isle, and Troika. And actually, and at least at several dozen other studios presently occupying corporate landfills across America. The problem is that pliability equals maneuverability. And bulbous, man titted fat-ass corporations like Electronic Arts and Square Enix are, by their very nature, impliable. Because they can't afford to be. They have shareholders to satisfy. Not that EA has to worry about that for much longer. But bringing shareholders along for the ride means justifying every move and every permutation of that move on the corporate chessboard for allowing yourself to proceed. The RMS Titanic isn't a gigantic metalliferous coral reef at the bottom of the Atlantic right now simply because it slammed into an iceberg, Rageaholics. The RMS Titanic sank because it was too large and traveling at too great a speed to adequately course correct when the lookouts first spotted a jagged mountain of razor sharp fucking ice. And that to me is the tragedy of the modern video game industry encapsulated. These massive publishing conglomerates have spent the better part of two full decades gorging themselves on the libidinous success of the second boom period of gaming that now they're obese. They have the maneuverability of a cast iron bathtub and with the advent of the next gen they've illustrated quite quite clearly, that they're thundering full speed ahead. But where the industry is divergent from the Titanic analogy, in my view, is that the iceberg isn't looming ahead in icy waters. They've already slammed into it. They slammed into the fucking thing back in 2008, and they've been taken on water ever since, but instead of boarding lifeboats and shouting women and children first, they're doggedly plowing forward, convinced they're impervious to the laws of economic causality. To name check yet another insufferably shitty nautical disaster flick, it's the perfect storm! The signs are every fucking where, and if you sincerely believe there's anyone occupying a corner office in one of these corporate megaplexes with a discernment to read these tea leaves, might I direct you to the fact that these were the same industry insiders who boldly proclaimed in 2007 that the video game industry was recession-proof. It's not coming, it's here. It's the adipose elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about, and yet they expect you and I to shovel its fucking shit. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed.